When you're first starting your business, figuring out what to put on your website can be fairly easy. I'm a web designer. I offer web design services. I'm a hairstylist. I style your hair. It can be pretty straightforward here. But as your business continues to grow and evolve, it may become more complex. You may realize that there's a certain segment of your audience that you're talking to more often, but you don't want to alienate the larger group. You may have a new course or a podcast that you're launching and you want to figure out if there's a way that you can share that with people in a way that won't confuse new people to your site. Depending on how your business is evolving, you may wonder, do I need to create another website for my course or my podcast or a new service that I'm offering? And the answer, as usual, is it depends. Honestly, I'm a little surprised that my team hasn't made a gif of me saying it depends and just send it out in every email where people ask me questions. I'm sure they will now. So in this video, I will share with you some things to consider if you are launching an offshoot of your services, launching a new podcast, creating a course to figure out whether you need to create a new website or if there's a way that you can integrate it into what you've already got and what the pros and cons are of both of those options. Stick with me and I'll be right back. Hi, I'm Meg Casebolt, the founder of Love It First Search, where we help online entrepreneurs to show up in search results and then turn those new visitors into leads, subscribers, and sales. For many years, when people have asked me whether or not they should start a new website for their course or podcast or offer, my answer is almost always, please don't, please don't start a new website. Please don't start a new website unless you have a really good reason to start a new website. Because y'all, we might think that websites are just something that you can throw up, but Every website is going to be an additional expense. It's going to be more work for you to maintain and you could potentially be competing against yourself in search results. So before you leap into creating a new website for some sort of piece of your business, I want to give you some things to think about. The first time that I got this question from one of my clients is from Terry Burke. She is a photographer in Louisville, North Carolina. When Terry and I first started talking, she had three different websites, one for families and pets, another for small businesses, and another to teach people how to do photography. Obviously, each of these audience had slightly different needs. Families wanted photos for the wall or to send out their holiday cards. Small businesses wanted those digital images to be able to use them on websites or in their social media and people who wanted to learn photography might not even be in North Carolina. They might just want to get ideas of how they can take better photography themselves. So Terry had built three different websites, one for each of those audiences. And when we went and looked at the SEO together and we took a look at what each of those websites was ranking for, we noticed that the family and pet photography website was ranking number 13 for Lewiston, North Carolina photographer. And the small business branding website was ranking 32 for the same keyword. It might seem to have both sites ranking well for the same keyword, but they're actually competing against each other. By splitting the sites, Terry was splitting up that content. Instead of having one big site where she could be found for Lewiston, North Carolina photographer, she had two sites with half of the posts each. We worked together and she consolidated both of those sites and then created three specific categories, families and pets and businesses, so that people could see everything that she did together. Plus, I convinced her that the audiences might not actually be that different. People might come in for their headshots and then also throw pictures of their dogs on their websites. People might come in for family photos, realize that she does business photography and then hire her because now they feel comfortable with her. Even though people have different needs in the moment that they're searching for things down the road, they may become clients across multiple offers that she has. Now, I also told her that she may as well roll the photography classes piece into that page because people who are looking to learn photography may want to look at the website of the photographer that they're learning from and make sure that the style is the same. Have some credibility behind it to say, oh yeah, Terry actually does know what she's doing behind the lens. If she were teaching accounting on the side, I'd say, no, let's split that out of the photography because those are two completely different skills and people don't necessarily need to see your photography to know that you're a good accountant, right? <laughs> but because we're we're talking about the same industry, it made sense to consolidate all of those into the same place. 
I've also seen a lot of online entrepreneurs who build entirely separate websites for their courses. Sometimes they'll build a sales page on a different website entirely than where their primary information lives. And the reason that they do this is because they want to have a specific destination that they can send people to in order to promote that course. And so when they're on a podcast, they can just say the name of their course website and people can go check that out. And there is certainly a benefit to that. But also if you're sometimes sharing your primary website with people and you're sometimes sharing your course website, then you're not only competing against yourself, but let's say that you're talking about these courses on podcasts, you're sending backlinks to multiple places instead of consolidating them into one. If you have a specific offer that you want to promote independently, instead of having two completely separate websites on two completely different domains, what I recommend is that you build the sales page for that course on your main website, and then you just purchase the domain that you want to be able to share with people and you redirect it to that page. I do this all the time on my website. So if I'm talking about my Attract and Activate program, the actual location of that sales page is loveitforsearch.com slash attract activate. I can't even say it. It's such a mouthful, but I have bought the domain attractandactivate.com. And when I bought that domain, I set it up that when people visit there, it just automatically redirects to where that page lives on loveitfirstsearch.com slash attract-activate. I don't have to build an entirely different site. Everyone who goes and finds that sales page is still going to my main website. I still have that traffic counting. And if I'm getting that from search, then I'm also getting those keywords to my main page. It works out really well to just have what's called a vanity domain and it redirects and nothing actually lives there. It just points to where people wanna go. I do the same thing with SE October. I did the same thing with Genera SEO. Every time that I create something new like that, I just buy the domain and I redirect it to a page on my site. And then I also don't have to worry about having multiple websites floating around. Now you might be like, Meg, what the hell? You just told us how everything lives at Love at First Search, but I know that you just created a whole new website for your podcast. So you're being a little bit of a hypocrite here. I'm trying not to be, I promise. I think that there are times where it makes sense to build another website for a section of your business. I want Love at First Search to be the place where people come for SEO specific knowledge. My podcast is not just about SEO. My podcast is called Social Slowdown. It's about all of digital marketing, specifically digital marketing that isn't in the social media sphere. So it felt like it has some parts of the Venn diagram that are overlapping, but it's not necessarily exclusively about SEO. And I didn't want people who were trying to find out about other marketing streams to feel like I was trying to push them into my SEO courses. There might be some overlap in my audience, but I wanted the conversation on the podcast to actually be bigger than the tutorials that I'm making for Love It for Search. So in that case, because they're not necessarily the same audience, it's not necessarily the same outcome that I'm promoting, I wanted to build someplace that could have its own community, it could have its own brand, and it could live independently than from Love at First Search. I know that there are gonna be people that listen to my podcast that never buy an SEO course from me, and I'm cool with that. That's not the intention of the podcast. The podcast is about thought leadership and having interesting conversations. It's not necessarily a direct sales tool, so it felt okay for me to have that live elsewhere. So before you build a whole nother website for your business, I want you to ask yourself this. Why do I think I need a new website? Is there some reason that I need to build a new website? Or maybe is my current website just not living up to its potential? Sometimes I see that people are starting new websites not because they need one, but because they're bored with the old one and they think that a new one will be easier and more fun. And if you're nodding your head in recognition and maybe a little bit of shame, <laughs> I feel you. I am an Enneagram 7 that is the enthusiast. So I have this tendency to leap into new projects because I want some sort of novelty and something new and exciting. And if you're building a new website because of shiny object syndrome, that's okay if that's part of what you recognize about yourself. Shiny object syndrome is real. I have a whole bunch of purchased but unused domains hanging out and aging in my domain cellar 
proving that sometimes we have great ideas that maybe we're not quite ready to execute on yet. In fact, the domain social slowdown sat in my domain seller for three years before I decided to start a podcast about it. So I'm still holding out just a little bit of hope that I'll find a way to use don'thateyourmarketing.com one of these days. I don't know what it's going to be, but I really like that domain. But if you're like, Meg, I don't know how to talk to two different related audiences on my website without creating a whole new space for it. What I would recommend is to think about maybe using your homepage to segment people in your audience. I do this on my homepage where I'm able to say, here are some resources for people who are DIYing their SEO. And if you're ready to work with us, here's how you can find that information. So it's people who are looking for different things from us, but I kind of direct them using the homepage, using the navigation menu to help help them figure out what they need. I can still have all of that there. I just kind of create multiple choose your own adventure paths that they can go down and they can self-select into the ones that they want. And then I can have, you know, different email lead magnets for different levels and tiers of my audience. If people are looking for information about SEO for podcasting, I send them to the SEO for podcasting section of the website. And I have a different lead magnet for people who are podcasters than I do for people who are just getting started than I do for people who want to, who are web designers. Remember that almost nobody who visits your website looks at every page. They look at what's interesting to them. People are busy. They're very good at figuring out who they are and where they fit. So just give them the tools to walk down the path that makes sense for them. You don't have to worry about them looking at things on their site that aren't relevant to them. They'll figure that out. This is a good reminder too that every post you publish on your website has the potential to increase the search reach of everything else. It's kind of like a rising tide that lifts all boats. So the more high quality content you create on a certain domain, the easier it is for everything on that domain to be found. If you're feeling like you're getting burnt out on your current marketing plan, then take a break, but don't burn it all down just because you're bored. And if your new plan of what you want to create is related to what you already sell and it's going to the same people you already serve, think about building that into your existing website, tweaking your sitemap, or sending a custom domain to a specific page instead of building out a whole new entity within your business. And if you've got an unrelated opportunity on your mind, that's okay. Not everything has to fit under your business umbrella. Not everything needs to be monetized right away. Sometimes you need to be creative and let things live outside of your business, and that's a good thing too. But that's, that's a video for a whole nother day. If you're struggling with whether or not to start a whole new website for your business, post in the comments below when we can help make Make sense of what's working in your situation. If you thought this was, video was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel to get more tips about how to maximize your SEO and minimize the time you're spending on your marketing.